first off, when I originally learned about Artlist, their license agreement was worded like crazy generous. Like the agreement basically stated that anytime you downloaded a song from their platform, you could use it in any new project forever, including your new projects after your Artlist subscription expired. And since then, their company has matured a little bit and so has that license agreement. And so has that license agreement. Now, if you go to the website, the licenses state that it only covers any projects that are completed while you still have an active Artlist subscription, which is more in line with the rest of these kinds of services. That said, if you actually download a song and then go download the license from your Artlist account, the license still appears to be that very same super generous license verbiage that would keep whatever you're working on from causing any problems with licensing. On that note, Artlist now also has a handy all-in-one sub Artlist subscription license certificate thing that would cover all the assets you've used from their platform, so you don't actually have to download a million individual licenses or even keep track of licenses organized between projects. Unless, of course, someone asks for individual licenses, in which case you can still provide those. In terms of what happens when your subscription actually runs out, I did have a period of time where I was taking a little break from YouTube and my Artlist subscription lapsed. For what it's worth, I did not receive any copyright strikes on any of the videos I've already published during that time. I didn't expect to get any, but it's still comforting to know that I can continue to trust their service and not strike channels that are taking a break. And speaking for creators, Artlist now offers a couple different kinds of subscription plans. They've got the social plan and the pro plans. You can save a good chunk of money if you're using the social plans, but I would still highly recommend getting the pro plan to save yourself from headache in the future. That is, if you ever intend on making a video for someone else's channel or like a one-off commercial or interview, or you just wanna experiment with other social channels or aliases or something like that, the pro plan would keep you out of trouble. The social plan only covers one of your channels on each social network, while the pro plan covers absolutely everything you're involved in from all your social channels to broadcast and live TV. Artlist used to only offer music, but they've since upgraded and now offer a huge library of sound effects, stock footage, plugins, templates for all the editing programs like Premiere and After Effects and Final Cut. They've basically become a one-stop shop for all the digital assets you might need to create any kind of video. What you need to decide though is if you need audio, video, or everything. If you decide to go for everything, you also get the extras like templates, plugins, and apps. And if you need 4K or 8K video, you'll have to get the pro plan instead of the social plan because the social plan only covers up to HD resolution on their footage. There's also a more expensive plan for video if you needed raw or log stock footage. And if you're just dipping your toes in the water as a creator and you just wanted to finally start getting some good licensed music on your videos, the music and sound effects social plan can be had for 15 bucks a month without the need to pay for a year in advance, but it goes down to 10 bucks a month if you do pay that year in advance. But in my opinion, the best value is still the Max Pro plan, which gives you access to everything they have to offer except for raw and log footage, and it covers all the available use cases with unlimited social channels for 40 bucks a month. So that's $480 a year. When it comes to finding music though, I still really appreciate the simple interface the Artlist has and how easy it is to browse through music and find a track that you like. Sometimes, if I'm sifting through a bunch of tracks just to find that certain feeling that goes with a video that I'm working on, I like to click around sort of after a buildup or right before the drop, trying to hear some of the melody. Um, all really quickly and I just click around on the waveforms and it's a really great way to visually do that. Browsing, downloading, favoriting, or organizing music is all really well laid out. I also really like that Artgrid has just kind of become the footage tab at the top of Artlist so you don't actually have to go visit another website just to search for your stock footage from the same service. I think a minor improvement to the whole interface could be made where the Artlist music player would continue to remain on screen for playback if you clicked over to the footage tab or other sections of the website. Obviously, you could just open another tab if you wanted to keep listening to one of the tracks on Artlist while you were browsing stock footage, but that's beside the point. I'm still really satisfied with the music and sound effects that are available on Artlist as well as the ones that they're adding. The pricing is simple and the licensing leaves me feeling confident with the videos that I create, and that's really why I continue to use them in my videos. That's also the reason why I agreed to let them sponsor this video. It's a service that I've used for a really long time, and it's something that I truly believe is a great value for creators. 
So I understand what it sounds like when I say I agreed to let them sponsor me, but I really do mean that because I've been approached by lots of different music services that are targeting filmmakers and creators like you and me. A lot of the times these services are like super hard to use. Maybe the search doesn't work very well, or it's really difficult to find a track that fits your style. So I usually just turn them down. Artlist is the only one that I personally really like and use other than what I used to use, which was Epidemic Sound, but I mean, you can go watch my original video on why I boycott them in the first place. And a little while back, I made a video using only assets from Artlist and Artgrid uh, back before it was the footage tab on Artlist. Because the way Artlist organizes stock footage is if you have a video that you really like, you can go click on the artist that submitted it and see other submissions by that same artist. And you can get a lot of the same actors. And so I strung together a whole bunch of different pieces of video and made a little story about it. Uh, I'll play that now because I thought it was really interesting and it didn't get like a ton of views, but I'm also not the greatest at making clickbaity titles and stuff. So anyways, this is made with entirely artless assets. This is Helen. Helen likes to work in the family greenhouse as a way to unwind. After spending just a little while with Helen, you learn a lot about her. Pick up on a few things about the way she operates. Like the meticulous attention to detail she spends on just about everything she does. And no matter what she's doing, she'll stop and give you a warm smile when you need it. Like she's making sure you're okay or checking up on you and how she always spends the full 20 seconds to wash her hands, even if there's no soap and it's water from a rusty garden faucet. You wouldn't know this about Helen if I didn't tell you, but she's having a pretty rough day. She lost a patient just a few hours ago. Don't touch your face, Helen. You're a doctor. Okay, you got me. Helen isn't a doctor. In fact, she's never even been to college. She's actually a stock video model. The problem is she's really not a very good stock video model. I'm not saying she isn't pretty. She's beautiful. But when the camera turns on, she changes. Like, you know, you can just kind of tell that she's acting like a stock video model. Like if you were searching for a video of a person clearly acting poorly for an obnoxious advertisement, you would probably be looking for her work. That's why we always keep the cameras rolling after we yell cut. For example, Here's a video of Helen working. Come on, Helen. No one uses a computer like that. And here's after we've yelled cut. Working. And then cut. She never asks to see the footage, though. You see, the truth is, I think whenever we're at these shoots, Helen would just rather be at home, working in the greenhouse, doing the things that she loves. But the problem is, doing what she loves just doesn't pay the bills. The thing about acting is if you're trying to act, then you're doing it wrong. Helen's a better actor when she's not acting, which is why I think she's been confined to these stock video roles where the acting doesn't really matter as much. But she gets by okay, she's happy for the most part. I mean, I don't think she loves her job, but she loves that it affords her enough time to work in the garden and take care of her family take long road trips to different locations and play dress up with different outfits. Helen's favorite place to get work done is out in nature where it's not so obvious that we're doing stock photography and stock footage. Even when it's cold outside, she'll give us that warm familiar smile. At least that's what I would think if someone told me they were a stock video model because I've never actually met Helen. Helen doesn't exist. I just downloaded all this footage you were watching from Artgrid, made up this story, and then the background music was from our list, and Helen probably isn't even her name. I mean, I guess there's a chance, but I doubt it. So if you want to sign up for an account, there's a link to where you can do that in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. Peace.